Big changes are coming to our nation's cybersecurity after the president signs an executive order. Welcome and hello, I'm Maggie Miller. And on this episode of To The Point, we will break down this new executive order and how you can prepare with some of our Tanium experts. So welcome everyone, let's just dive right in. This new order comes days after the colonial pipeline attack, which crippled our nation's gas supply and while we're still recovering from the solar winds breach that compromised many government agencies. And so the question people were asking right now is how do I prepare for the next incident? But what is the question that organizations should be asking about cybersecurity right now? I think the big question that agencies and organizations need to be asking is how best to position themselves to be ready for the next attack, regardless of the threat actor or the tools, tactics, and procedures being used, agencies need to find ways to implement solutions to be agile so that they can effectively and efficiently respond to that attack at scale. And if I can add, you know, one of the things out there is there's a unique opportunity with the expansion of the TMF or Technology Modernization Fund from the latest stimulus. So um, agencies always have a bunch of projects that they want to um, execute and move forward However, this really represents a unique opportunity to do cyber funded projects and really accelerate those initiatives. That's a really good point. Matt, anything else to weigh in on that? No, I think at a time of crisis like this, it, agencies have the um, opportunity to go forward and really seek some long-term solutions that allow them to meet the needs, not only for today, but in the future. And I think as long as we resist the temptation to uh, run out and purchase point solutions that meet the needs of today, or maybe uh, could have potentially helped against the attack that we saw last week and plan more for the future, I think that's, that's really the best strategy. Section three of the order focuses on modernizing federal government cybersecurity. It calls for the adoption of cloud services as well as zero trust architectures. So why is this so important right now? It's a great question. Zero trust and uh, hybrid cloud solutions are at the top of mind for just about everybody these days. And you know, I think we've, with the, the COVID pandemic and with seeing a significant shift in a short order to a distributed workforce, uh, people have completely changed their perspective on how to protect the enterprise. And the perimeter really is now the endpoint. And so now we need to look towards solutions that allow us to instrument at the edge and to protect these new network boundaries. And zero trust is really the architecture that's gonna help to get us there. Um, as organizations and agencies implement cloud and hybrid cloud solutions, it's really critical that the information uh, that is the strategic asset in our enterprises is protected where it exists. So moving to zero trust is a natural uh, implementation change, I think. It just gives us the opportunity to do away with the legacy moat and drawbridge aspect of enterprise IT security and allows us to implement agile and new solutions to protect the data where it exists. And section seven and eight both call on the need to improve detection of cybersecurity vulnerabilities and incidents. So Aaron, what tools are effective that agencies and organizations can use to not only detect, but respond to attacks? Yeah, absolutely. The, the tool answer is always a funny one too, because this problem that we're facing is complex. So thinking about a tool or many of tools kind of is part of the problem. We're creating like a siloed tool myopic view if we're trying to solve this problem. Uh, we really need a functionality that's gonna be you know, able to solve the next need, the next thing we're gonna be facing. Um, and many tools can't, can't solve that today. Uh, the greatest example is SolarWinds. So we had this attack recently where the tools in place, the EDR, EPP tools, didn't find that problem and solve it quickly. And what we need is a platform. We need something that's gonna solve it and be able to find it, give the visibility and actually have the trusted information to solve those risk questions and provide the, the leadership, the actual information they need to make those decisions. And so how do we just respond next? I would say, go ask the question, do you know you know your network? Do you know what's there? Do you know how to control it? Um, if the answer is no, you, you need to be looking for a tool to solve that problem. Section six orders a standardized playbook for responding to cybersecurity vulnerabilities and incidents. So how do agencies and org organizations get started with a playbook like this, Matt? 
this is really tricky. So I wish I could stand here today and tell you that there's a recipe card for how to defend an enterprise against an attack. And I wish there was a set of discrete steps that a defender team could follow in order to eradicate malware or malicious actors from the network. But the, the reality is it just doesn't work that way. Uh, we have to invest in tools. We have to invest in teams. We have to train those teams and enable them to view the enterprise holistically to be able to see all the way to the edge uh, so that the defenders of a network and of an enterprise can have a real-time understanding of what the normal is so that they can find the anomalous behavior so that they can pick up on the the one-off activities uh, that are leading indicators of some sort of attack I wish that we had signatures and that we had the ability to identify clearly what the next attacker is going to look like as they enter the enterprise. We just don't have that clear picture of what the next vulnerability or the next nation state attack looks like. So we just need to have the ability to look out, see all aspects of our enterprise, monitor in real time the changes and the effects that are happening so that we can make decisions, assess risk, and then deploy effects to remediate and respond to those attacks. That's really great advice. Thank you for that. And finally, Nate, how can how is Tanium positioned to help agencies and organizations with these changes in cybersecurity? Thank you. So really, Tanium allows organizations, agencies of all kind to, to hit the challenges head on and to help level the playing field. Um, it's about three things. It's about speed. It's about visibility. It's about control across uh, four key areas. And the first is to discover and manage all the endpoints on the environment. So with legacy solutions, um, typically they, they miss a lot of endpoints, um, sometimes as much as 20% of the surface. So Tanium helps eliminate that visibility gap for endpoints on the network or connecting across the VPN or from the cloud. Um, second is to accelerate incident response and remediation, where we can complement and extend SIM solutions with the ability to do real-time investigation at a forensic level. So here at Tanium, this is what we call the big R in EDR. So rather than a, a nebulous word-like response, um, this is specifically the ability to remediate um, 150,000 or more endpoints in a matter of hours versus what is often weeks or even months. Um, the third is that Tanium is a single platform. And so what we do is bring the SOC and NOC together, really facilitate workflows and help counter some of that tool proliferation that has characterized the industry. Um, additional benefits here are to reduce direct and indirect costs from licensing and infrastructure. And then uh, the, fourth th the fourth thing is to really operationalize CDM. So uh, what we can do with Tanium and are doing with a number of civilian agencies today is to populate those agency dashboards in real time. And that's with hardware and software asset management data, as well as managing configuration settings and vulnerability information. So in some, the position is that EDR as defined is really not enough. Um, organizations need the speed and visibility and control to both maximize their defensive posture, but also to rapidly detect and remediate breaches. Thanks, Nate. That's a really great way to bring this home. So thank you all again for your insights today. And if you're looking for more information on this executive order and how Tanium can help, you can visit our website, tanium.com. Thank you again for watching. I'm Maggie Miller, and this is To The Point.